Jaws is one of the most classic films of all time, and to this day is still considered to be the scariest and overall best shark film ever made. With little to no sharks shown in the actual film, Jaws still remains scary due to its proper use of psychological horror and an overwhelming sense of implication. Today, we will be looking at the film Jaws. None of man's fantasies of evil can compare with the reality of Jaws. Roy Scheider. Robert Shaw, Richard Dreyfus, Jaws. See it before you go swimming. Jaws takes place on a small island called Amity. On the island is our hero slash protagonist, Martin Brody, the chief of the Amity Island Police Department, played by Roy Scheider. After the body of a missing teenage girl washes up on shore, Brody is convinced that there is a shark in the waters off of Amity Island. However, the town's mayor, Larry Vaughn, played by Murray Hamilton, is not so convinced. But after a gruesome attack witnessed by dozens, the people of Amity Island are convinced that a shark has in fact infiltrated their waters. The mother of the second victim then issues a bounty for the shark, and this gets the attention of the other leads. A wisecracking fisherman named Captain Quint, played by Robert Shaw, and the young but highly intelligent marine biologist, Matt Hooper, played by Richard Dreyfus. From here on out, the three men are in a battle against the unknown, fighting a creature that is rarely seen, and as we all know, the scariest things tend to be what we cannot see. This more than anything is what makes us afraid to go in the water. Originally a novel by Peter Benchley of the same name, Jaws is a 1975 film directed by up-and-coming director Steven Spielberg, who to this day is still haunted by the process of what it took to make the film a reality. Throughout the film shoots, the crew would come across problem after problem, making the development of production almost non-existent. Some of the problems they came across would be the weather, going over their budget, going over their schedule, other boats being in the background at the most inconvenient times, and at the root of all this is what is probably the most infamous problem the crew came across, the shark itself. Back in 1975, CGI wasn't exactly a common method used to bring movie monsters to life, so Spielberg had to use a real-life mechanical shark. Problem was, the shark constantly broke down, and would sometimes stop entire days worth of filming. Because of this, Spielberg had to use different methods of scaring the audience. By using different camera angles and John Williams' brilliantly scary score, the film implied the presence of the shark as opposed to the shark actually being present. Blinded by his own horrible experiences, however, Spielberg was sure that the film was going to be a major flop and would end his career before it even began. Interestingly enough, that's also what Universal executives called to tell him every single day of filming. I felt that I was the eye of the hurricane. You know, all this fell on me. We were doing stuff that no one ever tried before. You know, we were winging it. Problems with sharks, boats, and the New England weather made the shoot drag on to triple the shooting schedule and more than double the budget, as the crew worried that Jaws might be a disaster film in more ways than one. In the film's climax, Quint's ship, the Orca, has become immobilized due to Quint applying too much pressure to the boat's engine. With the boat slowly sinking and nowhere to go as land is way, way too far away, the three men slowly but surely begin to accept their fate and begin to believe that they are going to die. That is, of course, until they decide that the best course of action would be for Hooper to get inside of the portable shark cage to inject the shark with lethal poison. However, their attempts fail, as the shark attacks the cage and Hooper just barely escapes. The shark then jumps on the boat and eats Quint alive as Brody can all but helplessly watch. However, Brody is not about to let the shark get the better of him, as he has come way too far to give up now. So he throws one of Hooper's scuba tanks in the shark's mouth in a final effort to kill the beast. If this doesn't work, nothing will. Brody climbs to the top of the mast of the sinking ship and watches as the shark charges towards him. Using every bit of effort and courage that he has, he aims for the scuba tank and with one bullet left, he blows up the shark. Smile, you son of a bitch! Afterwards, Hooper and Brody reunite and swim back to shore, and before the film cuts to black, the credits show that they have indeed safely 
made it back home. When Jaws premiered in 1975, everyone who had worked on the film believed it would be the worst film ever made. Richard Dreyfuss actually went on a talk show and explained that if the film turns out to be a disaster, that it isn't Steven Spielberg's fault, and that the blame should instead be thrown towards Universal Studios, as the production crew faced many problems, but Universal failed to help with any of them. Spielberg's reaction, on the other hand, was a different story. I was too nervous to watch it from my seat, so I watched most of the movie from right near the curtain. So if it wasn't going well, I could just take one step back and I would be out in the lobby. To Spielberg's surprise, the audience reacted in all the best ways, however. There was screaming in terror, laughing, and at the very end was a standing ovation. The audience actually cheered for what so many people were sure was going to be a disaster of a movie. Joss became a beloved film instantly and was loved by everyone who had seen it. Despite what Universal told Spielberg, the film's premiere told him everything he needed to know and that was that he could be a successful director. The audience loved Jaws so much that the film stayed in theaters for almost a year. To put that into perspective, today's newly released films stay in theaters for only four weeks on average. Because the shark was stubborn and hardly ever worked, the crew had to improvise ways of getting a shark on camera. So they got footage of actual sharks every chance that they could. Remember the scene where the shark is rolling around and thrashing with Hooper's cage? Yep, that shark is real. You're going to need a bigger boat. Despite featuring no shark at all, the scene where Quint tells Brody and Hooper about his experience on the USS Indianapolis is anxiety-inducing, and it's arguably the scariest scene in the film. The scene is very slow, and accompanied by eerie music composed ever so brilliantly by John Williams himself, this scene builds up so much tension as we are forced to envision the horrifying things that Quint is explaining to us. What's interesting is that throughout the film, Quint is a very mysterious character that almost no one knows anything about. Up to this point, the only thing about his personality that is the most intriguing is his hatred for sharks, and here we begin to understand why. His hatred is fueled by the nightmare-inducing memories of him having to watch as all his comrades are helplessly eaten alive, wondering if and when it will be his turn to suffer the same fate. <coughs> A film with a production process as difficult as Jaws is a film that is bound to have some mistakes. As one of the biggest problems the production crew faced was the weather itself, you can actually see a difference in weather in between shots. Rewatch the movie and you'll see what I mean. Jaws is my favorite film of all time. One of the things I personally love most about the film is that it has sprinkled elements of almost every genre. It's got comedy, horror, suspense, action, adventure, and even has some drama thrown in there. Jaws is a timeless classic, and it's inspired many of the filmmakers that we have today, and it's truly made its mark on cinema. What started off as a disaster of a film became a phenomenal success, and what's interesting is that to this day, Steven Spielberg has admitted that he still doesn't understand why the film is such a huge hit. Personally, I can't imagine why. <laughs> 